you've both been in Doctor Who many times, but have you ever worked together? Is it, is it not on Doctor Who? We've been trying to remember. We have worked together, we can't work. remember where. Because I'm so old now. <laughs> well, I would dispute that. Right. Uh, well, no, I don't know. Okay. So, was it television, theatre? <laughs> Tele. Tele. Yeah. 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 Not sure if you got really well, I don't think it's Dr. Who. Anyway, you were better. <laughs> <laughs> but you both did work with William Hartnell as the oh, doctor. Yeah. Yes. How was he to work with? He was great. Um, I was in I was in the Gunfighters. I think it was in Black and White so long ago, and uh, I played uh, a frightened barman. Yeah, and he was fine to work with. And when I finished, he said, "We'll have you back. We'll have you back." Yeah, I'm not sure when I was back, but uh, with Tom Baker many years later. Yes, I am. Um, I I love working with that uh, barman because. Um, I was a great fan because uh, he did a marvellous war film called The Way Ahead, in which he played some major. And, uh, I was so impressed by his performance and very pleased to meet him. I hadn't been in the business very long when I did my first Doctor Who, which was The, the, the Crusades. And um, he was absolutely charming, but so entirely different from this strict silent major that I'd seen in this war film. I mean, he was a very, very good actor. Very, very nice man. I found him a little bit eccentric, actually. It was quite surprising. I thought he was a terrific doctor. Yeah, he was. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how about the rest? Obviously, there was a sort of a regular cast, and you came in as guest actors. How did you find that? Did they welcome you in, or was there very much a separation? Oh, no, no, they were absolutely wonderful. I mean, as I recall, the Crusades, I mean, I had an absolute cough and spit in it. I mean, um, the thing I remember most about working on that was the fact that my eldest son was born 48 hours before I started rehearsing. So, um, I mean, up all night, because in those days, of course, the baby was born at home. And um, there was snow on the ground, but I left out was late for my first rehearsal, which was not a good thing. But um, everybody was absolutely in love with me. I mean, it's always been that. Yeah. particularly in television. Yeah. Because in those days, of course, we all rehearsed together first before we got on. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing about it. You know, you got to know people in the green room. And um, everybody was very friendly and very helpful. Yeah, because um, and before I did the gunfighters, myself and Peter Hawkins created the Dalek voice I think that was before, was it? Yeah. I'm not sure. So long ago. And Peter was sadly no longer with us, but he was a great voice artist, flower pot man, and God knows what. Yeah. Um, we're here to talk today about missing episodes. Um, I asked the uh, people on stage earlier if they were aware in the 1960s that television was kind of quite ephemeral and wasn't being kept, it would just be transmitted and then gone. Were you aware of that? Um, <laughs> uh, well, I, I was not aware until um, somebody told me that there were two missing episodes, I believe, of the Crusades. And I have to say that <clears throat> even though I did have a cough and spit in it, there was one scene I remember, and I fluffed from the back it. And those were the days when they, when they didn't edit. And um, so it's there for all the world to see. And I don't know um, if that's one of the missing episodes or not. I'm, I'm rather hoping it is, but, um, for obvious reasons. But um, I had no idea that so many things. I mean, prior to that, I did a series called United, which is a football series. And that entire thing was just big been wiped completely, which I think is so sad. Yeah, I wasn't aware about these missing episodes. Of course, when I started in television, everything was live. So it was hair raising. You know, you used to rehearse, camera rehearse all day. And then there was, the clock started ticking. And then it says 30 seconds, 10, 9, 8. And you were quaking. And 
and uh, it was very nerve-wracking. We got used to it. And then if you laughed later on, then you could at least do a retake. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> Always went perfectly. <laughs> I, but this, the, I mean, I think I did about three or four live takes. I remember we did Z cars in the early days, and that was live. And I remember rushing between the sets, um, it being live. But generally, um, by the time I was doing Doctor Who, that was being recorded. But I understand the editing was a very expensive technique, and that's why they didn't like to go back. And so consequently, my little fluff there. Um, stay so I thought, well, what's there after the year? Well, I'm yeah, yeah. well, I did a, it was a live production of Death of the Salesman, and that was terrifying. And there's a young, I was playing a young lawyer, and then there's a scene with Willie Lohman, the, the anti-hero. And when I, I was, I was being changed, I rushed across the set to hit my mark. When I hit my mark, the Derek Bennett, who's the floor manager, gave me the wind-up because we were overrunning. So, so he said, get a move on in the scene, S speak faster. So that was pretty terrifying. Yeah. I got through it, thank goodness. So obviously, I mean, it seems strange to us that, that things weren't kept, but they weren't. Um, how does it make you feel to, that sort of all these things that you worked on um, can no longer be seen? I suppose in, uh, a lot of the things I've worked on, I'm jolly glad they can't be seen. But the gunfight was... Yeah, that's, that, we can all watch that, yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah. one of the early ones. It's yeah. amazing that, yeah. Uh, that survived. Yeah, it's quite, I think it's quite random. And Six of Death is, you know, yeah. one of the script by Douglas Adams. Mm. But, so that's good. That's 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 mm -hmm. I know I did watch um, a little bit online. I watched um, part of the set because there are two of us. And I mean, it is a shame. Julian Glover was in splendid age. Julian Marsh. I mean, some good performances. I wouldn't say about the action scenes. They weren't too good. But um, I, I think it's such a shame it is busy. And there it is, it's gone. Yeah. Um, talking about episodes, um, one of the episodes was found in, in 1998 and returned to the archive. Were you aware of that? No, not no. at all. No. <laughs> no. 1998. Um, yeah, so it was missing up until that point. Oh. Um, and they know where it was. I'm sure somebody here can tell me where it was found. <laughs> Of New Zealand. I really know. How interesting. Maybe they should have invited us over there too. <laughs> but how, how do you think, I mean, say another episode turned up that you would be in, how do you, how would you think you might feel? Would you be excited by that? Or? <laughs> Not especially, no. no. I'm always excited about work. <laughs> work is good. <laughs> um, David, um, you've mentioned you provide your voices for Daleks. Um, how did you get that role? God, it's so long ago. Um, I must have worked with Peter on a number of occasions doing voice work, and I think the BBC must have heard where they were planning this whole Dalek voice thing. Um, so I can't precisely remember how it happened, but I'm very glad it happened. Because we used to go to the Lion Grove studios, um, pre-record them, and um, we, we had this stylized way of speaking, and then they fed our voices through a synthesizer. So that was the way it caught on big time. And you, you obviously got asked to do it again, back, get asked back to do it again, many times. Oh, many times, yeah. yes. But then when they remade it in the 90s, mm -hmm. I, 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 it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. But good luck to whoever did it. 
Um, you obviously both came back and did other doctoring stories with other doctors. Yeah. How did you find that? Did you find this? It was a change. Do you like working with other doctors? I should think David was like me. It was just a job, wasn't it? Yeah, it was another job. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did enjoy working um, with. Um, John Pertwee was the next one, which was Colony in Space, which is very fun because it was rather like making a western, which we, uh, we went down to the um, Cornish clay pits, mines down there, and um, that was great fun to do, and, and uh, I, I found working with Peter, and a lot of fun, and um, it's, um, it was always, it's always nice to be asked to do another job. It's an act of healing. It's just happy that the phone is wrong again and somebody wants to use it. <laughs> so well, it I, I enjoyed working with Tom Baker. He was pretty eccentric, but a lot of fun. And uh, I had a very nice part of a Russian character called Kurensky. And um, there was one point in one of the episodes where he had to age very quickly. So they, they were took me back and forth uh, into the makeup room and put a bit of makeup, shot me, and then a bit of older, 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 older. Then they ran this whole thing together. So Kerensky suddenly became an old wizard man in a flash. I remember that very well. And of course, the script was written by Douglas Adams, who was a brilliant writer. He died, he died far too young, sadly.